Hallelujah. And God has called into his kingdom five souls. Amen. Amen. This morning and we give him all the honor and all the glory and all the praise. And as I call their names this morning, because they have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And as I call their names this morning, I want you to give the Lord a loud, loud sound of praise uh, for them this morning. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Sister Tyrion Moore. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Sister Peyton Alexis. Yeah. Hallelujah. Sister Ayola Elliot. Come on, come on. Give him praise today. Amen. Sister Priya Salaman. Yeah. And Sister Cheryl Valentine. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. And we thank him for the lives that he has saved. You know something? Jesus in his prayer said to the Lord, you may be seated. Jesus in his prayer said to the Lord, Father, all those that you gave me, I able to keep them. Come on, somebody. All those, I, I, I listen, listen. You cannot keep yourself. We cannot keep you. Nothing you do can keep you. Amen. Nothing you can ever do can keep you. But Jesus can keep you. Come on, somebody. That's his promise. All that you gave me, Father, I will keep them. And the Father have given you into Jesus' hands today. Amen. So we give him all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. Amen. I don't want to be long today because we still have to go to the baptism. And after the baptism, we all go home. But next week, Sunday, next week, Sunday, will be the day that you dress up in all your nice dandan and thing, you know, and they look nice and calm, and we gave you the hands of fellowship as we welcome you into the body here at the church. You are already welcome into the kingdom of God. From the moment you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you become a child of God. You are welcome into the kingdom of God. The Bible says, for as many as receive him... To them he gave power to become the sons of God. So right now you are already children of God because you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Next week, please God, we will be welcoming you into the body of this church. It is said that the, 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 the path to the church or the door to the church is baptism. That's what somebody says. Amen. So when you're baptized into, an, into a church, uh, you become a member on the body of that church. Amen. Hallelujah. And I want you to know the difference between a member in the kingdom of God and a member on the body of the church. There are a lot of people who are members on the body of the church and not members of the kingdom of God. Am I speaking to the church this morning? Amen. A lot of people come and they get baptized for so many different reasons. And they believe that baptism is what saves them. Baptism don't save you. You are already saved. Baptism is a sign, an outward act, symbolizing what have already taken place on the inside of your life. Amen. When you accept Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ washes you and cleanses you from all sin. And you are saved. Right now you are saved. Hallelujah. Amen. And as we go to the water, it's a representation. Amen. It symbolizes the burial, the resurrection. Amen. The death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Are we getting that? Amen. So I just want to, to speak just for a short while as I take us through the book of Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Amen. Follow me. Paul speaking to the church at Rome and he says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin 
live any longer therein. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not so sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. Come on, somebody, say amen this morning. Now, if we be dead with we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ raised from the dead, dieth no more, death hath no more dominion, over him. Hallelujah. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye, or consider yourself, to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourself unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin, listen to this, for sin shall, have, shall not have dominion over you. Sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. I want to stop there for a while. A lot of people today, and I want to just re-emphasize re some of the things that I said earlier. A lot of people have the tendency to believe that baptism saves them one. And you ask some people, well, why are you getting baptized? Some people will tell you, well, pastor, I have my CXC to sit in January. And I believe if I baptize, God will help me pass the CXC. Some may tell you, well, Pastor, I am sick, and I believe if I get baptized, God will go, go heal me. Those are not reasons to be baptized. Amen? What is the reason? for someone to be baptized. The Bible says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And so, on the day of Pentecost, when Peter preached the message, the men in, in the book of Acts say, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter says, Believe, repent, and be baptized for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, do you look like, believe? You believe. How do you believe? You hear the word of God. When you hear the word of God, you get faith to believe. Faith cometh by? And hearing by? The word of God. Amen. So you hear the word of God, and you get that faith to believe. Amen. And when you believe, you now repent. You turn away from the sins that you were committing. Now, you don't turn away, you say, well, I turn away from sin. But when you turn away from sin, you turn to God. Turn away from sins, turn to God. 
And then after that comes baptism. Any other reason for baptism is not a reason for being baptized. If you have never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ in your life and you go in the water, you just take a wet. Come on somebody this morning. But the acceptance of Jesus Christ. Amen. I remember one person get, get baptized because there was a young lady in the church that he likes. And if he baptized in the church, he can get the young lady. When I was nine years old, eight years old rather, they were passing around with the bread and the wine in the church. And they say, you can't get bread and wine unless you're baptized. So I tell them I want to get baptized. I want bread and wine. At the time, I didn't know what I was doing, but I grew up in the church. And later on, when I fully understood the significance and the meaning of baptism, I did get baptized. Amen, church. So Paul speaking to the church here. Now that you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, Paul begins to speak to the church. He begins to explain to them what baptism is and the life that we're supposed to live even after baptism. Amen, church? So he says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sing that sin that grace may abound? Remember the Bible says, where sin doth abound, grace doth much more abound. So where there is plenty sin, there is plenty grace. Plenty grace is needed for plenty sin. Amen? Come on, somebody. And so Paul was saying, well, should we continue in sin because we know that the grace of God is there for us? Paul said, no, 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 no. God forbid that. God forbid. Amen? He says, know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Baptism symbolizes, or one of the things that baptism symbolizes is the death of Jesus Christ. Dead. Dead to sin. Amen? And if you're dead to sin, then you cannot sin. Am I speaking to the church this, this morning? So he went on to say, therefore we are buried. So now, if you're dead, the next thing they do is either they bury you or they embalm, or, or they embalm you or they, or they uh, burn you. All right? So Paul was speaking about burial of a dead body. Of something that is dead, it must be buried. So Paul is saying, therefore, we are buried with him. How? By baptism. By baptism, we are buried with him. So we dead to sin. Amen. And now the dead is being buried. Come on now, church. Amen. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so also we should walk in the newness of life. Hallelujah. Death. Burial, resurrection. Come on, say that after me. Death, burial, resurrection. That's what's happening to you today. You are dead to sin. When you accept Jesus Christ, listen. The word of God says, when you accept Jesus Christ and you come to him, he takes your sins, he blots it out as a thick cloud, or he, he takes them and he puts them into the sea of forgetfulness. He remembers your sin no more. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses you, washes you, make you clean. You are now a brand new person. And that is what we call regeneration or the born again experience. When you are born again, you are regenerated. You have your physical birth. Amen. That you were born from your parents and then when you accept Jesus Christ you are born again it's a new birth amen 
Now, after the new birth, there is a certain way that you have to walk. And that word walk there talks about lifestyle. Hallelujah. Paul says you are dead to sin. Dead. You accept Jesus Christ, you are now dead to sin. Sin no longer have rule over your body. Amen? Now what do you do? After that, you're dead. So we take you to the water. And we bury you in the water. Come on our church. But we didn't leave you in the water. Hallelujah. If when Jesus was buried, he had stayed in the tomb, there would not have been a resurrection day and there would not have been a hope for every single one of us here this morning. But Jesus rose from the grave. Come on, somebody. The songwriter says, up from the grave he arose. And we thank God today that Jesus Christ came out of the tomb, came out of the grave, and is alive today, and is alive forevermore. And so the Bible tells us, hallelujah, that on the third day, on the third day, there's something about the third day. But on the third day, hallelujah, Jesus came out of the tomb. Just like when we put you into the water, where you are burying that old man. And that's why Paul talks about burying the old man. Burying that man of sin. Burying him in the water. And when we raise you up out of the water, you are raised now to walk, as Paul says, in a newness of life. You leave everything in the water. You leave all the sin and all them bad ways and nasty attitude that you had. All them, you leave that in the water. Amen. And you walk out of the water now. A brand new creature. Brand new person. God have already made you that. But this, what you do today, symbolizes what God has already done on the inside. That's what baptism is all about. That's what baptism is all about. So Paul says, for he that is dead is free from sin. He that is dead is free from sin. You're dead, right? Anytime you have, listen, anytime you see that people dead, and you go to talk to them, and you see them walking, what are you going to do? Huh? Man, you have a funeral in church now. Have a funeral in church and have a coffin in front of you with a dead body in it. And all they believe, we believe in resurrection and raising people from the dead. If that body only gets up out of that coffin there, half the church empty. And, and we, no, no, that's serious. I, <laughs> I remember the story when we were in St. Vincent. My wife, we were over there and the old man had, um, he sat in front, came right up and he sat in front there, boy. And the pastor decided to play a trick on the church. So the pastor dressed up like a, a devil with horn and paint up his body and all kind of thing, boy. And he stayed outside the church and everybody in the church. And the pastor ran into the church with a pitchfork and he said, ha! The church empty. Everybody gone. All the time they we go tramp on the devil. Satan, we mash your head. Satan, we this from the time he entered the church. All them mash head, everybody gone. One old man sit down in front. So he walk up to the old man. He said, "You afraid me?" The old man said, "Living with your sister for twenty years, and I, I run, I go run from you now." <laughs> but that. That, that, that's a joke we all, we all remember. But, but what I'm saying is this. Dead people not supposed to be walking. Amen. Living people supposed to be walking. Come on church. Amen. When you're dead and you're dead to sin and you bury sin in the water and you raise up now, you walk now. Come on somebody. You walk now. 
in that newness of life because you have life. That's what Jesus says, you know. Jesus says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. Amen. In John 10, 10, the thief cometh but for to kill and to steal and to destroy, but I am come that you may have what? And have it how? Hallelujah. And we must understand this church. You know, we have some people they get baptized today and they continue living just as they were living before they got baptized. No change. If there is no change, then something was wrong with your conversion. Amen? Conversion talks about change. And if you cannot change, then something was wrong with your conversion. And we love to sing, oh, what a change, oh, what a change, oh, what a change in my life. And we keep on living the same way. Then we're lying. Then we're lying. There must be a change in our lives when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And we sing, the things I used to do, I will do them no more. But you're doing the same thing, eh? Place I used to go, I will go then. Go in the same place. Sometimes we just have to stop singing, you know. And let people who live in the life sing the song. Amen. Hallelujah. So, we need to, we need to, there must be a change. Come on up. You're dead. You're buried sin. You're raised up now. You're walking now in a new life. So Paul says, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness, but yield them as righteousness. Members of righteousness unto God. In other words, let me tell you, let me put it in my way. Do the things that will please God. Amen? Do the things that will please God. The devil have a way of trying to bring back your old life before you. And he have a way of presenting it in a, putting it in a nice new way for you. So all the time you used to horn your man, now the devil will tell you, hey, you are just going to have an affair. So he takes it over, it's not horn no more, it's a fear. And you tell yourself, what? Uh, I'm just having an affair. But you're sinning. Pawning, affair, whatever is still sin. Amen? No matter how the devil painted for you, how he put it for you, it's sin and it's still sin and it will always be sin. And if you have been dead to sin, come on somebody, how could you go back to dig up that old dead again? Come on, church. So, what, you, you, you're going to exhume bodies? Huh? You're dead. Leave what dead? Dead. And walk in newness of life. Amen. You don't go in the cemetery 12 o'clock in the night to raise no dead. Amen. Come on, somebody. Leave the dead there. Let the dead stay there. You walk in now in a new... You see, let me tell you something. There's a life ahead of you, you know. There's a life ahead of you. And that life that you live in now is a life that Jesus will live his life in you. And that life in you now that you live, Paul says, I live it by the faith of the Son of God who lives in me. And I want to encourage you this morning, five of you that are here, and you know, somebody says you're supposed to see ladies, and we have five ladies this morning. Where are the men? I don't know where they are, but we're giving God praise. God is in the saving business, and God does things how he knows to do it. The Bible says he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And if the word of God is being preached, and men are not heeding the word, and only the ladies are then, ladies. Come on. Amen. We're giving God thanks for you also. 
but my encouragement to you this morning as we talk about what baptism represents death burial and resurrection you are risen you are risen that old life that old life yeah that old life Priya, that old life you young children that old life is dead that old man is dead you are now walking in a new life new behavior new attitude come on now son. new temperament live for the lord have a desire to be in service for the lord have a desire to do things to please god because that's who you are pleasing now because that's who your father is so we give god thanks for each and every one of you this morning as I said, I wouldn't be long because we really want to go up there and do the baptism and be back home early. We won't be long, but I want to encourage you, five of you, live for the Lord. Live for Jesus. Live for Jesus. Make yourself available to be used by him. Amen? Whatever you can, in whatever way, whatever talent that God has blessed you with, make yourselves available to be used by him. Amen? So I trust God is going to truly bless you all this morning as we continue to worship and to serve him. Amen? Could you give the Lord some praise today?